The child is the dream of its parent, a dream that the parent lives. If you want to learn how to live your dream, just watch your parents, see how it works for them. But that's how it works for all of us. With caring, with passion, with resolve, with commitment, and with determination. That's the easy part. The tough one comes later. The tough part is when you and your dream cannot be distinguished. When you become the dream, dream of not just your parents or yourself, but a point in the journey where you become the dream of a nation, when you become the dream of the choices you made, when your vision echoes in millions of resonating voices across the world, from where there is no looking back, you are the dream. There can be times when it will be or feel impossible to perform. It may feel like a fairy tale. No one said that life is easy. But never be shaken by its adversities. A dream, a vision is not an intangible, unreal, imaginary piece of fiction. A dream has hands, it has feet, it has a body, your hands your feet, your body. The dream is you, and you are the dream. May the two always remain united in spirit. And if that means a struggle, if that means a fight to finish, so be it. It's not about winning or losing. It's about living a life. If I had been a sportsman, a boxer, athlete, hockey player, cricketer, if I had joined the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force, if I had been anything else other than an actor, my parents would still have been happy because I was their dream, no matter what I myself was dreaming to be. Gandhiji said, be the change that you wish to see in the world. If I were to add my feelings to it, I'd say, be the dream that you wish to see in the world. A dream which is neither mine nor yours nor anyone else's, a dream which belongs only to itself. What you bring to the world are the blessings of your parents, learnings of your teachers, and your dreams. They are precious. Do not trade them for anything in the world. Which brings us to a curious word that has become a part of some kind of jargon. It's a word called career. I'm not quite sure I quite like this word, career. Career is literally a dash of speed, like a horse does on a racetrack, bolting at uncontrollable speed without a name or an objective. Life is not a race course. Life is an order, a discipline. Life is a focus, life is a purpose, a purpose achieved by virtues which are developed with personal effort. Do not gamble on life. It may not happen twice. A dream, therefore, is much more than a career. The dreams of the parents and the dreams of the child live in one place, remember. That place is called home. Not yours, not mine, not his, not hers. No one person's. A home is always ours, our home. Our dream is our worship. Our vision is our prayer. This is the structure of dreams. This is the bond. This is also the bondage, a bond of love, the bondage of responsibility, be that of a small family or that of a large nation. We are because we dare to dream. We are because we learn to excel. You know, chances are very strong that I could have been in cinema or in any other creative aspect of life without a grounding in education. Education which is in consonance with the belief that what sculpture is to a block of marble, education is to the human soul. We shouldn't aspire towards a graduation degree merely because of peer or parental pressure. 
We should aspire to become graduates because we feel the need to be complete with the advantage of formal education. Remember always in life, whatever is good to know is difficult to learn. The education of the greatest value that I received in my school, which was Sherwood College up in the hills in Nainital, was how to be a human being of what we call in shorthand character. And I don't mean the ones that I play in my films. Admittedly, I had the benefit of inspirational parentage, but Sherwood taught me to live in dignity with my peers, live in a community, and live well with myself in the world at large in consequence. Living together, working together, learning together, fighting and loving each other, competing fairly in noble rivalry and cooperating supportively, I learned a sense of fellowship. So well put in my school motto, which was in Latin, Miriat quisque palmam, let each one merit their own prize. Let each one merit their own prize. I've always believed that one must harness the power of dignity through training, training of the mind, the body, and the spirit. Another word for this training is called discipline. I didn't always like to agree with the routine of boarding school and the rules, but afterwards I can tell you, I really appreciated the fact that had it not been for its initially imposed regimen, I could not have learned to harness the power of my own dignity for myself. The boxing ring in my school was a compulsory activity. Everybody in school had to enter the boxing ring and, and fight. It's now probably a, a long abolished practice because of its barbaric practice. But to me, it was a great tutor in this regard. You will have any amount of support from outside the ropes, but inside, you're on your own. Similarly, in life beyond, you may have a die-hard corpse of cheering fans and also perhaps those that jeer at you, criticize you, abuse you, in contempt. But at the end of the day, you must engage life alone. The greatest prize in life is not the recognition of worldly success. The prize the best crowns the human being is that of the possession of good character. It is a strenuous prize. It must be re-won. It is also a certainty of mine that there is many a day where I shall fail that prize myself. Not for want of trying, but it is the most worthy prize of all. And without its effort, all material success and fame is sheer emptiness.